Hey everyone, welcome to this lecture on the equations of lines in space. So in this lecture we are going to derive three different types of equations for lines in space. The first two are going to be very closely related. All three are related in some sense as you would imagine. So let's start by just drawing a line in space. So here's our XYZ coordinate system. Remember you can put kind of some perspective here if you want. Let's suppose we have a line. I'm going to draw my line up here. Remember in three-dimensional space there's no perspective, right, when you're drawing it on a two-dimensional screen. So it's not clear where this line is, right? It just could be anywhere. It could be, I mean, it looks like it's in front of the z-axis the way I've drawn it, but other than that, it's not clear at all where this line is. So we want to try to be able to, or not try, we want to be able to describe this line uh, in space by, uh, you know, by describing its direction and a point on the line. So you always need two pieces of information to describe a line. And usually, what you might say is that you need to know two points on the line, and that's always enough, right? So let's suppose we have, say, this point, capital P, and this point over here, capital Q. And we want to use these two points to describe the line and somehow write equations of the line that we can, you know, give a friend and everybody will know exactly what line we're talking about. So here's what we're going to do. Let's suppose that we first start by connecting these two points, P and Q, and making a vector. This, this is going to be uh, our, what we're going to call our direction vector of the line. So this vector V, like I said, it's called a direction vector. It's the same as the vector PQ, and it plays the role of the slope of the line. So this is called the direction vector. It's a, it's a fixed vector. It's not a function, okay? This is the direction vector of L. <clears throat> By the way, there are many of these, right? Any two points that you pick on the line L, would, if you connect them, you would get, actually get two direction vectors, one from P to Q, the other one from Q to P. So this is not unique. This vector V is not unique at all. All right, but in doing so, in making this choice, we've, we've also kind of chosen an initial point on the, on the line here. So we've chosen this point P. And the way that we're going to describe the line is we are going to think of a vector here, which we're going to call this a position vector, R. So here, R is equal to a position vector. And this R is going to start at the vector P. So it's, it's terminal. It's going to be in standard position, this vector R. And its terminal point is going to be, it's going to trace out the line. So it's going to start at the point P and then over time, so we're going to have to introduce another variable here, which, which we'll call t for time. Over time, it's going to trace out the entire, the entire line, the, just the terminal point of this vector r. All right? And so, the, again, the idea is that maybe when we get, say, over to this point here, let's make this orange. It's maybe not the best idea. Let's make it a lighter color of blue, just different blue. So when we get to this point here, we want this point here to correspond to the terminal point of our vector r at some time t. So r sub t. All right? And that's our goal then. So our goal is to parametrize the line L by this vector r. So this vector r, which is going to end up being a function of t. And that, that's where the word parameter comes in. So a parameter is a variable that is not one of our three axes but it helps us describe the situation here, right? It helps us describe the line. All right, so if we arrange this so that the point Q is at T equals one, then to get from P to Q, we or from, you know, the terminal point from R being here at P over to being at Q, then what we have to do is add R plus V, right? And so Basically, the idea here is going to be that we are going to be allowed to stretch this vector v by the parameter t and uh, stretch it in the positive direction all the way out to infinity and in the negative direction all the way out to infinity, and that will trace out the entire line. All right, so let's do it. There's the kind of heuristic setup of what we're going to do. So let's suppose our, our direction vector v has components A, B, C. This is a three-dimensional vector. Everything here is happening in three-dimensional space. And further, let's suppose that our vector R, this is our position vector that we want to know something about, right? So our, our vector R, this is going to be X, Y, Z, just the coordinates in space. So it's going to represent, this is going to represent the point in space of the terminal point of our vector R, all right? There is a couple things that we need to know about R. Number one, R of zero, 
So when t is equal to zero, when, we, when we're just at the starting point, we should get back this vector right here, right? We should get back this point p. So if our coordinates of our point p are say x1, y1, let's call it x0, y0, and then z0, y0 there because uh, we're going to use t equal to zero, right? So these coordinates of r0 should be exactly the same, x0, y0, and z0. And then moreover, our function here, our, our r vector, should be changing in time, right? And so x should be a function of t, y should be a function of t, and z should be a function of t. All right, and now we just need to figure out how can we describe this vector in terms of this setup that we've made, right? Well, we introduced our parameter t, all right? It's our stretching, say our stretching factor right here. It's supposed to be a brace. So this is like the vector tv right here, stretched out vector v. And how do we get to this vector r of t? Well, we go out to p and then we add on this vector tv. So it's very simple. Basically, the vector equation of our line is going to be that r is equal to um, it's going to be equal to r naught plus tv. This is not really detailed enough. This is perfectly. This is this is great though, right? So in some sense, we have starting point plus slope or direction times t, right? So just like a line, mx plus b. In this case, it's vt plus r naught or r naught plus vt. But we want to write this out, okay? So the vector equation of this of L of this line L is given by R of T is equal to. I'm gonna just gonna write all this stuff out, right? So I'm gonna write R naught fixed vector R naught plus T times V, and then slowly I'm gonna plug in all the stuff we need here, right? So our vector R naught is the vector x naught y naught, z naught, that's the coordinates of p, plus t times the direction vector. Our direction vector's components are a, b, c. And then we can do a couple of things. We can multiply in this t. So t is a, is a scalar here, right? It's not a vector. It has to be multiplied to each component then, right? So then it's going to be written like x naught, y naught, z naught, plus vector t a, t b, tc and then we can add these two vectors together and so our final answer here for the vector equation of our line is going to be that r of t there's going to be two answers because i really like this one but this one is the one that's in component form so x naught plus t a y naught plus t b and then finally z naught plus t c and so this is the vector equation of our line l both of these are correct they're obviously equal to each other um, but yeah, I mean, you can use either one. So either one of these is fine. Usually you're going to want it in component form. And so that'll be this one. All right. So at this point, that's again, that's the vector equation, the vector equation of our line L. There's two more types of equations. One of them is going to be called the parametric equations. And this is obviously closely related because in our setup here, we introduced the parameter. The par we're not going to have more than one parameter. So a line is a one-dimensional uh, object, mathematical object. So uh, we only need one parameter to identify it, right? So we've got, um, we've got basically we've got everything we need because now we remember that r of t on this side, we had written this up above, can be broken down into these component functions: x of t, y of t, z of t. And that's, of course, still equal to this right-hand side, right? So x naught plus ta, y naught plus tb, z naught plus tc. And to get the parametric equations of our line, we just set the components equal. So for two, if you want two vectors to be equal to one another, then their component functions have to be equal, all three component functions. And so again, this, is, this gives us our parametric equations of L. And so this time I'm going to write these, it's basically you just take these out of the vector notation and you arrange them so that they look like this. So you, our equations will be x of t equals x naught plus t a, y of t is equal to y naught plus t b, and z of t is equal to z naught plus t c. And these are the parametric equations of the line L. Okay. 
So uh, one more set of equations here. There's our parametric equations right there. We can do one more thing. So we can, this last version is called the symmetric equations. And we'll see how this works pretty quickly here. So the symmetric equations, they obey the following. So let's suppose we just drop the of t over here. So just like when you write y equals mx plus b, in that scenario, and so in calc, calc 1, your y is a function of x, but you don't have to write the of x every single time, right? So let's just remember that we have our parametric equations. So our goal is going to be to get symmetric equations. But let's just remember that we have these parametric equations, but I want to write them as follows. So I want to write this as x equals x naught plus ta, and then I'll write them this way. y equals y naught plus tb, and z equals z naught plus tc. And so a couple things happen here. Each of these equations now has the, the variable on the left, which is the variable from space, right, the space variable, and then only one variable on the right, and that variable is the parameter at every point, right, or for, in, for every equation. It's the parameter. And they all have the same, none of them have the same x, y, or z, right, those are, those are unique, but they all have the same t, the same parameter. So we can now try to solve all three of these for t. All right, and let's just see what happens. Well, you'd have to subtract x naught, divide by a, right? So as long as a, b, and c are not zero, right? Then what do we get? We get that x minus x naught over a is equal to t. For the first one, just subtract over, divide. But at the same time, look at this one. This one's equal to y minus y naught over b. And at the same time, t is equal to z minus z naught same deal, subtract over, divide by this time c. All right, so I arrange this in kind of a weird way. Probably I should move this over here. And do this. And the whole idea here is that then these equations right here, this is really, it looks like kind of one equation or maybe even two because there's two equal signs, but this is actually three equations. It says x minus x naught over a equals y minus y naught over b. x minus x naught over a also equals z minus z naught over c. And then the third one is y minus y naught over b equals z minus z naught over c. So these are called the symmetric equations of your line. And these ones are nice because they have gotten rid of, they've gotten rid of um, the parameter, right, the dependence on the parameter. So the parameter is gone, and if you take any two of these, you can rearrange. So if you just took this, the two with the x and the y, you could rearrange, solve for y if you wanted to, and then you could have an equation for y equals something in terms of x, and it'll look like a line on the x-y plane. It'll be the shadow, actually. So let's scroll back up to our picture. And so what would that look like if you were to so like remove that, you'd see the shadow, maybe you can't see that color. You'd see the shadow of your line on the xy plane if you just took two of the symmetric equations there. There's also a shadow over here, right? A shadow over here in the xz plane. Well, it wouldn't look like that, would it? <laughs> um, yeah. It would have to be like got to go through, if it goes through there then it's got to be a, directly above it probably but there would be a shadow there maybe on the xz plane um, but the point is you would get these three shadow lines and then all together you'd have this one line which created all three shadows at the same time so i'm going to end this video here but these are the three different versions of the equations of a line we've got the vector equation it's this one the parametric equations it's these ones and then the symmetric equations that's these ones you need to know all three.